Hello, everybody. Welcome back to some more Mellow Monday, where we're going to be painting some more of the uh, Marvel United minis. So last time I was working on uh, Venom, I actually went and uh, did all the finishing work off stream, but uh, God, camera doesn't quite focus right. Is it gonna? No, not really. Um. But yeah, no, I think uh, Venom came out pretty good. Um, did a little bit of highlighting work and stuff like that on it. Uh, the problem with with it is black is extremely hard to do highlighting and low lighting work on um, because it's black. <laughs> um, but I think overall the suit came out pretty good. Honestly... The best work that uh, came out on it was the highlighting and low lighting on the tongue, I think, came out uh, especially good on it. Uh, so, yeah, came out uh, pretty good from what I, you know, just from judging my own work. Um, but yeah, I think it came out pretty decent. So, uh, this has been clear coated, it is all set. Uh, today. We are going to be working on a different figure. Let me go put this off to the side. So today, I'm uh, going to be working on getting Groot painted. Uh, I'm trying to do stuff that is uh, going to be relatively easy to paint on stream uh, without doing too much like fine detail work, because uh, it's a little bit difficult to do that when I'm on camera. Uh, that being said, have a different rig set up today for doing the streaming so instead of having a camera that's in front that is blocking my view at all times while I'm trying to do stuff I'm actually um, I set up a better web camera that is currently hooked up to a um, a uh, microphone stand it's like a boom microphone stand so the web camera is actually um, pointing straight down at uh, my painting surface so it makes it set I can see quite clearly what I am painting and it also makes it set you can see quite clearly what I'm painting so uh, it should work out way better than last time where I kept uh, getting blocked every time I try to do stuff or ended up like painting off camera because like I would move the figure closer to me and it would go up completely off camera so having it set up this way I feel like is going to work out way better uh, let's everyone have a good view of the action. Um, so yeah. Uh, ooh, I forgot to get some music started up. Let's uh, go ahead and get that music running. I need to turn my sound down a tad because it's a little bit loud on my side. Um, let me know if the music is a little too loud on your side. I, I, I listen. I did a few test recordings before a stream just to see how my levels compared to um, the music um, playing. So I think I got it dialed in pretty well, but as always, uh, you guys will be way better at judging that than I will. Um, I did so much setup beforehand, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to bring over my um, little mixing sticks, i.e. toothpicks. I will be right back while I go grab that. Alrighty, so we are doing Groot, obviously. Um, so how are we going to do Groot on this? So what I'm thinking is I'm going to take a regular flat brown, uh, have that be the base coat, but I'm actually going to cut it with some black uh, to make a nice... Uh, dark base coat to start with so I'm just gonna go over the entirety of him in a very dark brown uh, that way it gets into all the little uh, creases uh, the hope is that if I do a nice dark base coat of brown uh, then what I can do after that is I can do lighter and lighter uh, coats of brown uh, in the higher areas that way it should hopefully create more depth uh, of all of Groot's uh, bark, as it were. Um, 
So it should make some really nice dark details uh, in all the cracks on him. Uh, and then as I continue to do lighter and lighter layers of brown, it should just really make everything pop way more. Um, and that's much easier to do with this where he's got a lot of texture on him already. So it's more stuff that I have to work with detail-wise. So I'm, I'm hoping it should look pretty good. And then what I'm planning on doing after I get the lighter and lighter coats of brown on him. Um, obviously going to go through do black for the eyes. Um, I might try to use a very, very fine brush and see if I can put like a little shine dot on the eyes just to give the eyes a little bit of definition too. Uh, and then I'm going to very, very lightly dry brush uh, some green accents onto him, kind of like give him a little bit of a moss coat in certain areas. I think that should uh, end up looking pretty good. Um, and then base-wise, like, it's rocks. Like, I'm going to go through, do a brown layer for dirt, and then uh, do some gray. And uh, I'll try, like, going through and um, mixing my gray with some uh, lighter and darker tones just to try to give a little bit of variety to the rocks on the base, and hopefully that should look pretty good. Um, hey, you know what the other thing is that I forgot to grab? I forgot to grab a paper towel, and we'll be right back again. Sorry about that. That should be better now. I just needed to grab some stuff so that I can make sure that I can mix my paints how I need to and then get all the excess off when I go to actually paint this. So yeah, so let's start off. We're gonna take some of this flat brown that I have and uh, put a little bit of that into the paint palette. So, I'm going to be going through a lot of browns, so let me go ahead and put a lot of it in here. There we go. That should be pretty good. And then... I forgot there was lyrics in this. Let's hope I have enough flat black to uh, do mixing with. There's not a ton in here, but I got enough. No, we'll just do that. Give this a good mix. Actually, I might need a little bit more than that. That's kind of... Eh, you know what? That's shaping up to be a pretty dark brown. Not... I don't think that's too bad. This kind of doesn't show up well on camera, but I think that might be a decent... dark base coat to go with. So let's add a little bit of water to this just to thin it out. Might need a little bit more. That way I don't glop this on. I want it to seep into the joints but not completely go into a too thin of a layer to do anything with. Um, let's take a look. Let's see. I need a decent sized brush because I am going to do it in such a way that it's not going to take me forever to paint this. So, uh, you know what? We're going to add another dot of water to this. 
just to thin it out a little bit more. So it's not completely thinned out like I would like. Okay. That should work. All right. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Let's give this once over. Hope everyone's doing well today. Hope, uh, hope it hasn't been too brutally hot for people out there. I know, at least in my area, it's been, uh, pretty bad. I'm lucky because I have... I got central air installed right at the beginning of summer. Um, so it hasn't been too, too bad for me. Um, but I know not everyone is as lucky to, to have that kind of setup. Um... But yeah, on, on my ends today, it was a little iffy. Um, not so much temperature-wise, but uh, we had a really bad thunderstorm roll through today. Um, it was intense. Like, uh, there was... Basically, uh, I would see the lightning flash and then almost immediately hear the uh, thunder. So it's like, oh, this is like right over my house. Um, so that was a little freaky. Uh, definitely went through and unplugged all my stuff as I started to hear the uh, thunder roll in because it was just like, eh. Probably not going to hit, but do I want to risk all of my electronics if it does end up hitting? So, it was a little freaky that way. Thankfully, my dog is a sturdy little girl and heard the thunder and basically stuck her head up to listen and then immediately put her head back down and went to sleep. Um, loud sounds do not particularly scare her. Um, honestly, like, water is, is the thing that... <laughs> water is the thing that frightens her the most. Uh, you give her a, a shower or bath, and, uh, you would swear to God, uh, it's like you're torturing her. Um, but, uh, when it comes to loud sounds, like, uh, fireworks, uh, thunder, um, not that I get a lot of gunshots out here, but, um, I particularly remember when uh, she was very, very young, shortly after I adopted her, um, was visiting my dad, and he was working on um, putting some stuff together for his garage, uh, which involved uh, getting some pieces of wood uh, nailed into the concrete foundation. Uh, and the way you do it is you uh, have this device that you load a nail into it, and then you put a what is essentially a, a blank bullet round in it. So there's no, it's basically just the shell, so like the casing for the bullets and gunpowder, um, but it doesn't have like a, a bullet uh, to it. So you load that in along with the nail, then you hit the back end of it with a hammer, uh, which ignites the gunpowder from the impact, and that drives the nail into the concrete. Um, so it's quite loud, because you're, you're f essentially firing off a 
a bullets um, to drive the nail in, right? Um, and so we were worried that, like, my dog was going to freak out from the sound of it. And my dad hit it, and she did... She acted like she didn't even hear it. <laughs> um, so it was like, oh, okay. I guess that doesn't affect her then. Um, so it was, it was hilarious. So yeah, I ended up just finding out that eh, loud sounds really don't affect her that much. And it's not like she's deaf, because you call her name and she immediately knows, regardless of where she happens to be in the house, that you're calling her. So, it's literally just loud sounds do nothing for her. Um, but, like I said, if you try uh, giving her a bath, uh, you, you feel like you're like waterboarding her or something like that. Like, she is not a happy camper when it comes to that. But, we get it done, and I always make sure to give her a few treats after a bath just to make up for the fact that she had to deal with all that water. Alright, gets all of Groot's body covered in this nice dark brown. This is actually looking pretty good. Like, I wasn't sure about the color when I mixed it, but... I'm um, looking at it as it's drying, and it looks pretty dang good. Like, it's drying really, really, really well into, like, the perfect color. It could probably be a little bit thinner, but it's, uh, it's not, like, globbing on or anything like that, and we're still... Still seeing all the details. Um, so it's not too, too bad. So, figure for, uh, at least until I get my painting legs under me again. Um, you know, once I feel like I'm starting to get back into the swing of things with this, um, I'm just gonna do some of the easier figures that I have that, uh, do not require a ton of colors or detail work. Um... Start with those, that way I have a nice, easy thing to work with for getting um, back into the swing of things. And then, once I'm feeling more comfortable, then I can actually go through and uh, do some of the more detail-oriented figures. But, that's why I started with Venom. Venom was like a nice... Like, Venom doesn't have a lot to him. Venom's got black and white for the suit and emblem, respectively. And then, um, pink for the tongue. It's a super simple paint scheme. But, uh, at least for, like, the tongue, it gave me a little bit of room to, uh, do some do some extra detail work with uh, for like the highlighting, low lighting, that kind of thing. Um, and the emblem let me do a little bit of dry brushing. So that's, you know, there, there is some stuff in there that's just like, okay, this gives me the opportunity to work on some of the things that's I, uh, 
some of the paint skills I, I need to use all the time. Um, but without being something that I am uh, putting a ton of work into to try to get um, you know, putting a ton of work to try to get uh, all the details done, that kind of thing. Uh, big brush is doing pretty well, but I'm getting to the point now where I actually need a smaller brush to get into the little cracks. And this paint is drying out very, very quickly. One of the nice things is my hand is not shaking as much this time around while I'm doing this. Um, so I feel like I'm doing a little bit better. Also, um, so when I previously, you know, you know, I said I'm not shaking that much and, and I just saw my hand shaking like crazy. Um, one of the things that I ran into last time when I was doing this painting stream was I had to move my microphone into the living room, um, which required me disconnecting all of the mic stand stuff and using one of my old, uh, microphone stands, uh, which is what I'm using right now. Um, but part of the problem of that was, um, the thread that was on the old mic mount, um, came off in the isolator that I use, uh, for the mic. That way, you know, like, if I tap the, the mic stand, it's pretty minimized as far as uh, vibration going through to the mic. Um, <laughs> but, so, the the isolator was almost, uh, especially, was almost, like, uh, permanently connected to my old mic stand, which is just like, oh no, um... How am I going to make this work on Tuesday? Uh, ended up using a old blue uh, snowball mic uh, for doing streaming last Tuesday. Um, which is functional, but like the audio quality was not great on it. Um, I have since gotten in a new isolator. I have that connected up to my good mic arm in the office where I do my streaming on the computer uh, for like my games and stuff like that um so I got that and now I also have um a nice isolator on my old mic arm that I'm using for uh, when I do painting in here. So things should work much better, because basically all I need to do now is transfer the, uh, microphone into the office, uh, and connect it up to my mixer. Uh, I do have to move the mixer to right now, uh, which is kind of a problem, but I've actually ordered it in the mixer. That way, um, I can just have a mixer that is specifically for when I'm out in the living room doing, um painting, and then I'll have a separate uh, mixer, my original mixer, uh, in the office, and we can just transfer the mic back and forth and have that be the only thing that I have to worry about uh, moving around. Um, so yeah, should work out way better now. Alright, so that was our dark brown so, uh, 
I feel like I can just use a regular brown now. Let's see how this how this looks in comparison. So it's my dark brown compared to the regular flat brown. Um, could I just lighten? Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's do this. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to take a little bit of water, add it to that, and then what we're gonna do is let me give this a quick shake. Um, because I feel like if I go to regular flat brown, um, that's gonna be too much of a color shift. So I, I'm gonna try to mix some flat brown with the dark brown that I've already made. Excuse me. Don't know if that picked up on the mic, but if it did, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, that is a little thin. Uh, you know what? We're gonna grab another one. We're gonna add a little bit more paint to the tray here. Doesn't look too bad. That's... That looked pretty good, actually. Alright, so. Here's what we're gonna do. Gonna get this flattened out a tad. Try out my hand. Yeah, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to go in the higher areas of this and hit it with the, whoops, and hit it with this lighter brown. You know what? Actually, I'm going to do my smaller brush. Not the super small brush, but I'm going to get this one. That way I can better control going over the uh, higher areas of this model. And that should hopefully... I did this right. Should make the color... And the grooves and all that should make it show up really nice. It's kind of really it's looking pretty subtle, but I think as we layer more and more on, it's going to make it show up way better. later. 
I need to really overhaul the uh, description of my stream because I haven't done that in a while. I really wanted to make sure to add, um, at the bare minimum, I want to get my desktop PC specs into the description because um, I know that's a question I've had have had uh, from viewers before is what the specs are on my computer and it's like uh, I built it a while back I don't remember at this point um, so I need to get that updated but also I should just like put more work into the description because it's kind of a little bare right now I feel like if I'm trying to do this uh, a little bit more professionally, then I uh, should try to work on getting the description to be a little bit more involved. I gotta tell you, I'm liking how this is looking so far. Like, I, I don't need to hit every part of this mini with this layer. Um, honestly, I think if I kind of just go in kind of, not random areas, but like, not try to hit every high area, it'll give some nice variety to roots bark gives them kind of like a little streaky look in where the colors are that way it's not just like a flat sameness throughout uh, the paint job. It, give, it gives it more of a, of, a, of a, you know, a tree look kind of thing where the bark is not just one even color on a, on a tree, right? You got a bunch of like streaks of different things in there. then once I go through and, you know, get lighter and lighter coats, then I can start to do the highlighting where I actually go through and hit all the high points on the model, try to get a little bit more definition to, into all of it. Some, some art because they are very, very good at uh, they are very, very good at art. I mean, they, they studied art history, so they're very talented in that area. But uh, you should see some of the some of the work that they've done. think it would be cool to have them on even you know it'd be cool to have them do some of the minis with me but honestly like uh, I think it would be even more fun to see them do just some whatever art that they want to do on stream I'll have to talk to them and see if I can get them to do that sometime
wish I could fix the focus on this camera. I might need to back it off just a tad. I don't know if that improved it at all, but... Fortunately, with this camera, the uh, controls do not let me adjust the focus. Hang on a sec. Double check. Don't think... Yeah, focus is grayed out on the camera controls, unfortunately. The uh, other one that I was using at least let me putz around with the focus. Uh, this one, the focus is just, like, set for a specific length. Um, it doesn't even have autofocus. Like, <laughs> I figured at least I'd be able to, like, do autofocus, but that's even grayed out, so I don't know what they were going for on that. Um, it's a decent camera, like, the... The, um... Resolution's pretty good. It's a 1080p camera. Um, does 60 FPS. Um, it's very, very wide angle. Like, tested that out over the weekend um, because uh, we were doing. Uh, a role-playing game session that someone had to remote into. Um, it was a bit COVID scare. Figured we'll be better safe than sorry, so... Just had that person remote in through Discord. Um, so I could share out, and I was using this camera to do it. And the camera does an extremely, extremely wide uh, viewing angle. So it worked out super well because we were able to get the entire map to show up on camera. Uh, granted, it looks a little fisheye when you're doing it that big. Um, but it worked super well for making sure that the entire battle map was on camera. Uh, so that, that ended up working out. Okay, let's find a few more areas to hit with this. Let's hit the head a lot first. It's kind of like holding off on doing the head because it's kind of where I have to hold the figure a lot of times. So honestly, after I do this coat of paint, Probably just gonna go and use the flat brown by itself without uh, without mixing it with the, what's already on my palette, um, so that I can try to get a little bit more of a light tone going. model. It's hard to, I'm sure it doesn't pick up super well on the camera, but they kind of gave Groot some ears. Like, he's got little bumps uh, where ears would be. It's like, you know what? Not what I expected, but kind of works.
you know, Groot can have ears. That's fine. I'm trying to think. I, I don't even... Oh, man. You know, it's been a while since I've watched the Guardians of the Galaxy films. It's possible Groot has ears in that. I didn't even think he might. That's one of the things with um, with Marvel United. They kind of went for a... Um, for most of the figures, they went with a uh, Disney MCU kind of design for a lot of the characters. Um, now, granted, that's not the case for, for all of them. Um, like, especially, like, Quicksilver. Um, they went with a, uh, more of a classic design for him. Um, I think that might have been down to, um, the Fox merger hadn't gone through yet, I don't think. So it's possible that was part of it, um... But they went with uh, kind of a MCU aesthetic for a lot of the figures. Um, granted, Marvel Comics themselves um, have been migrating a lot of their character designs to look more like their MCU counterparts. So... Not, uh, not necessarily everything that they do is meant to evoke MCU design in these figures, because um, comics are also kind of going towards the MCU design at this point. But like um, Ant-Man uh, in this set has a very... MCU kind of design. Uh, the Wasp uh, is kind of MCU-ish for the design, um, but more of... I feel like the it's, it's made to look more mechanical, like the MCU design for the Wasp, um, but the she does not have the full face mask like uh, Ant-Man does. So it's... They kind of went both directions. There we go. I feel like that looks pretty good. It's given a little bit of a uh, difference in tone to the areas. Um, you know what, I do need to get up the nose a tad more. pretty good. can let that sit for a bit to dry while I get the next paint prepared. Alright, so get this shaken up so I can do a flat brown. adventure adventure uh, zones 
Um, but I, I can't remember. Radio Quiet, okay, so it was, um, from their, uh, one set in West Virginia, I forget what the name of that arc was, it's not coming to me right away. By the way, if people like the music, um, this is just, I, I bought, uh, I bought a while back, um, a lot of Griffin McElroy's music for Adventure Zone, um, he was doing a, uh, he was doing a, uh, charity thing, uh, where uh, he was selling a bunch of his music on Bandcamp. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think it was for um, I think it was for raising money for um, the immigration stuff that was happening during uh, Trump's presidency. Um, so I, I bought a bunch of hits, a bunch of his, uh, Adventure Zone music off of Bandcamp, um, through that charity push. Um, it's quite good, uh, if you like the music, I would absolutely recommend, uh, pulling it up on Bandcamp and, uh, throwing some money in that direction. Um, it is kind of the platform that I do most of my mu music purchases off of at this point. I like it because I can go through and give the artists um, extra money if I feel like it kind of thing. Because it's a, for most artists, it's a, um, they put forward a pay what you want. So like there's a minimum um, price point for their stuff, but you can kick them extra money if you want, kind of thing. And so, generally like to do that. Um, and I, there's a lot of artists on there that I like their music, so I end up buying a lot of my stuff on there. Like, uh, like I said, got Griffin McElroy stuff through there. I've been, uh, buying, um, Bit Brigade's music through Bandcamp for a while now, too. Um, if you've never heard of them before, highly recommend uh, giving them a listen. Uh, more so if you can... Uh, like, I highly recommend their albums, but they are a uh, rock band that does um, video game covers, um, but they're main gimmick that I really like is they're kind of performance artists, so they do a uh, speed run of whatever game that they are playing the soundtrack for uh, live. Um, so you are watching one of the members of the bands uh, do a speed run of the game while uh, the rest of the band is is playing the soundtrack to the game, and it's it's very, very cool to see. Uh, I've seen them in concert a few times uh, at PAX East. Um, I've seen them do... What? Uh, I've seen them do Mega Man 2, um, Metroid, the original Legend of Zelda, um, Ninja Gaiden, and... I went to go see them uh, at an actual concert venue. Um, they were playing at a bar. Um, and they were going through and doing uh, the original Castlevania, which was also very cool to see. And the music is very, very good. Also, as an opener for the Castlevania show, 
they did a speed run of um, Marble Madness on the NES, and <laughs> uh, I remember trying that game when I was younger um, and not being super good at it, and this guy beat it in about 10 minutes, maybe? <laughs> Just like, oh, oh. <laughs> now I feel real bad about my, my ability to play that game. getting the Vip Brigade music queued up sometime. It's one of those things where I I, I I you know I want to load it up but um it I would say probably doesn't work well for a Mellow Monday stream because it's a rock band but who knows maybe I'll do it one of these times. Just tend to look for more low key stuff to listen to for uh, the Mellow Monday stream, just to kind of fit with the uh, idea better. But if people would like to listen to. Bit Brigade. I'd be more than happy to uh, get them loaded up for next uh, get them loaded up next time for a Mellow Monday stream. Their uh, soundtracks are fantastic. say this is uh it, it like it's hard to I don't know how well it's picking up on camera but uh I don't know like the the paint is uh the paint job is looking really really nice on this doing the kind of random spots of brown, lighter tones of brown, it really gives a lot of, a lot of liveliness to the, uh, the figure, because, like, you're not getting, like, I was planning on just doing, you know, highlights, lowlights, that kind of thing, um, but honestly, like, it's kind of going beyond that and kind of giving it more of a tree look, which is what I was, you know, hoping to go for, too. So it's actually working out really, really nicely. Like I said, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera. I guess it kind of does. pretty well.
like not necessarily what I was expecting the paint job to look like. It's actually, I think it's looking better than I had pictured in my mind. spots on the head. I think once I get enough of these browns on here, go through and do some highlighting on the ridges, this thing is going to look fantastic. a little bit more because kind of a problem is that I am handling the uh, top part of this figure quite a bit and because of that it is actually wearing the paint off from touching so I'm gonna try to hold on to the base more often on this Hit a few more areas on this. Sec. Uh, there we go. It's like, where can I put this to get the, uh, right angle to paint this. So, one of the other things that I've, uh, I've been doing lately um, is I'm trying to watch through all of the Marvel TV stuff that I have not had a chance to do yet. I'm trying to go through it in order so I can get fully caught up uh, with where they are at right now. Um, which has been okay. Um, I've been watching through mainly uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, because that was on for seven seasons. Um, it ran for a while. Um, I didn't watch it while it was running. Um, but, um, trying to go through all of it, that way I can basically say I watched it um so like I haven't seen Miss Marvel or um Moon Knight yet I've heard both of them are very very good 
Um, I do plan on watching them once I get the rest of this stuff done. Um, it's been kind of rough going through Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., though, not going to lie. The first season was, was pretty decent. Um, I liked how it tied in well with um, Winter Soldier. Um, the movie. Um, but, like, season two, I was kind of just eh about. Um, wasn't terribly impressed with season two. Season three was another one where I was, I was kind of just not really paying attention to it much. Um, I was present for it, but that's about the most I can say. Um, which is a shame, because, like, it's it's a decent concept. I just couldn't really get into it. Um, that said, I've been going through um, Season 4 of it currently. And Season 4 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is actually keeping my attention. Um, it has been really fun to watch so far. I mostly enjoy um, that it features Robbie Reyes as um, Ghost Rider. That's been real fun. Um, the rest of it has been not too bad. Um, but... Gabriel Luna as as Robbie Reyes. I, I've really been enjoying him so far. Um, I don't know if uh, they plan on bringing him into more MCU stuff. <laughs> don't... Uh, so... No spoilers in chat, please, but, um, I don't know, I don't know if Robbie, <laughs> I don't know the end point of Robbie this season of, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so it might be that's why they have not, um, brought him into the rest of the MCU stuff yet, um, if he, if he dies, don't let me know, please. Um, I prefer to find out on my own. Um, but I, I think it would be real cool to see more of him uh, if he is still around. Um, I think that would be really fun to see. Um... And, uh, just had the flashback episode, uh, from that in particular, uh, which shows how Robbie got his Ghost Rider powers. And it's like, oh, he met, um, well, he was saved, saved, quotes, uh, by... It very much looks like it was meant to be Johnny Blaze. Um, I think that was the intention. Uh, which is cool. Uh, that is not the way he got his powers in the comics. Um, but I thought it was a nice little uh, thing to put in there. Uh, so, that was cool to see. Uh, I would like to see more of him. Uh, and actually, speaking of bringing back characters, uh, they made the announcement that they're doing another um, Daredevil uh, series uh, with Charlie Cox. Um, Daredevil Born Again, I believe? Uh, it's going to be on Disney+, Plus, which I am looking forward to that. I, I, I like Charlie Cox as Daredevil quite a bit. Um, I will say, um, it's a minor gripe, but, um, 
I wish they did more with, um... I wish they did more with his ability in the show. Um, when I say that, I mean, like, um, a as kind of not great as the Ben Affleck movie was, I feel like they did a good job in the Ben Affleck movie of Daredevil showing uh, that, showing his, his sonar vision, as it were. Um, I, I feel like they represented that very well in the movie. Um, they also did a good job of showing that um, if there's loud enough noises that really throws him off or potentially disables him. And they never really get into that in the Daredevil show, at least not that I've seen. I haven't seen season three of, of Daredevil yet. Um, I will be getting there eventually. Um, so I don't know if they did a better job of showing it there, um, but I, I feel like there's been instances in the Daredevil show where they could have shown that better, and they didn't. Um, so who knows, maybe, uh, maybe I just missed that. And if that's the case, I look forward to be being proven wrong. Um, but aside from that, I love the first season of Daredevil. Season two is pretty good as well. Um, and Charlie Cox in particular playing uh, Matt Murdock. I, I liked him a lot in that show. Um, would love to see him play Darede Daredevil some more. Um, I loved his very, very short cameo in the latest Spider-Man movie. Uh, as as much as I was kind of just meh about the movie in general, um, the fan service was was very fun in, in the uh, what was it Spider-Man No Way Home? Um, like, the plot was kind of just okay for me, um, but I really enjoyed the fan service that they threw in. It was very fun. And, and I gotta say, I was never a fan of Andrew Garfield playing um, Spider-Man. Uh, and and I, let me preface this. Uh, well, not preface this, but let me let me say it this way. Um, I thought Andrew Garfield did a fantastic job playing Spider-Man in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I feel like he didn't do a good job playing Peter Parker. Um, that was my complaint. Um, and the stories were just kind of eh, okay. Um, now, I loved seeing Andrew Garfield in, um, Spider-Man No Way Home. He had a very, very, very good arc in that movie, and I was not expecting it to be a, as good as it was. Um, he had a really good character arc in that movie. I, I feel like he kind of stole the show uh, with that movie. Um, people may not agree with that. I thought he was fantastic in that. That was that was the best uh, Spider-Man stuff that I've seen them give him uh, for that stuff. So it was really nice watching him in that movie. Um, the rest of the movie was just kind of, eh, okay kind of thing. Like, I wasn't super super impressed with the story. It was more of a hey, I like all the references that they're throwing in, and it's cool seeing all these characters interact with each other. Like, that's fun. 
Um, but the story was just kind of not fantastic. It's hard. Like, um, I love Tom Holland as as the MCU Spider-Man. Like, they when they introduced him in uh, Civil War, uh, I was stunned um, because, like, Tobey Maguire was a really good Peter Parker. He was an okay Spider-Man. Um, as much as I love the Sam Raimi films, um, yeah, it, 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 Tobey Maguire was very good at playing Peter Parker and okay at playing Spider-Man. Um, and then it was, like I said, it was the other direction with Andrew Garfield where he was very good at playing Spider-Man I think, and less so at playing Peter Parker. But I think that mainly came down to the writing because they made they made Peter Parker into more of a, more of like a skater boy kind of character in the Amazing Spider-Man films, which I feel like didn't really jive well with the character like it, it's a different interpretation of Peter Parker for sure so like I can't entirely fault them for trying something different but it just didn't feel right for the character um so like there's there's that um but then Tom Holland came in in Captain America Civil War and he nailed playing both Peter Parker and um, Spider-Man. He was fantastic doing the duality of that role. Um, just like pitch perfect in both in both uh, performances. And, again, like, you go to, from there, you, you give him his own outing in Homecoming. Homecoming is quite possibly my favorite Spider-Man movie in general. Um, like, the story was fantastic. Uh... Michael Keaton playing Vulture was phenomenal. The twist uh, with Vulture was fantastic. I didn't see that coming. Like, it was just so well done when he comes to the door. Um, like, I legit gasped in the theaters when it happened. Um, it was the car in the car with him it was a super tense scene that was just really really well done Homecoming like I said is probably my favorite Spider-Man movie uh, going from that to uh, what was the second one uh Far From Home. Um, Far From Home was a decent flick. Um, the the story was a bit wonky at times. Um, Peter didn't make a ton of sense in that movie at times. Like, um, when he's just... He's in... Hey... Hey, Libra, how's it going? Sorry, I was just, like, going on and on about Spider-Man. <laughs> and I don't know if I missed what you were saying when I uh, was going on and on about that. Oh, 
Oh, he just got here, okay. That was me just ranting about uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> but uh, I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well, too. What you been up to lately? from COVID and mostly better now. Apparently, when I told you I had it before, I had bronchitis. People in the house had COVID. Now, oh God, no. Oh, well, so you're recovering from COVID and, and mostly better now? Well, that's that's good to hear. Oh God, so you had bronchitis before and now you actually have COVID. That's real rough. So, um, so did you end up like losing your sense of smell or something like how did you differentiate from you had you thought you had COVID before to now you know you have COVID now <laughs> like what, what was the what was the change that made you realize there was a it was just bronchitis before Yeah, the, the tests are super helpful when it comes down to that. Um, like, I'm 99% sure I haven't had COVID yet. Um, but I have taken a COVID test a couple times just to be on the safe side. One time was very early on in COVID. Um, I took a COVID test so that I could have a clean test for traveling down to visit my partner uh, because at the time, very early on in COVID, um, we were, there were very strict restrictions on you need to have a clean COVID test if you're traveling uh, down there. So I was like, okay, well, I need to get this COVID test. Uh, and then the other time I took a COVID test was much later on when um, when I was uh, I have a group of people over regularly on Thursdays for uh, playing Pathfinder and uh, after one of those games um, got an email from one of the people in the group that said hey uh, I got COVID, um, you might want to get tested, uh, I ended up getting tested, and did not test positive, which was good. Uh, they're sending out eight new free at home tests again via USPS. Put in your info, should, oh, I will have to do that, because I am currently out of, uh, the free at home tests, so I will have to do that later. I saw it's nice to have it just in, as an in-case kind of thing. So yeah, I will have to do that later. Gotta, I gotta make a note of that so I can remember to do it. Because otherwise, it's just gonna skip my, skip my mind. So when not act, I'll be thinking about something. I tend to forget. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you're doing better now. Um, because, yeah, it's... COVID's one of those things where it's just like, oh god, 
I'm I'm always worried about uh, how people are gonna do with that. Cause like even when you're vaccinated, it's, it's still like uh, how bad are the things gonna be, and how bad's the like how bad's the uh, how how bad are the chances of you getting long COVID are gonna be? Like that's that's one of the things that I'm always worried about too. Just glad COVID is gradually becoming less deadly, but more contagious over time. I'd love if it just turned into another flu. Just can't. Yeah. Yeah, if it can get to flu status where, you know, we just got to get the yearly COVID shot and not have it be... Like, even the flu can be deadly if you're not uh, protected against that kind of thing. But if it can get to kind of flu status where it's not that deadly and especially if you're vaccinated against the kind of thing then that would be nice last dose was around December last year yeah I got a like I am like, I think I was due for another six month booster uh, last month, I need to, like, actually go and just get myself scheduled for a booster. Um, like, there's no recommendations on fourth booster, but I want to get another one. Um, just so that it's active. <laughs> some point in time. Further, they're going to combine it with the flu shot sometime. That would be awesome if I could just go and get a COVID and flu shot in one thing. That would save a ton of time and save me having to get multiple shots because uh, I am not particularly good with needles. Um, thankfully, whenever I've gone to get a COVID shot, the pharmacists will listen to me and when I say, hey, I have a fear of needles. Please don't tell me when you're going to poke me with a needle. Just do it and let me get that. <laughs> um, get the everything vaccine. Yeah, need more of that. Um, like I will say one of the not one of, like, the, the... This is a hard qualifier to make, but one of the nice things to come out from the COVID stuff was that the um, mRNA style of vaccine seems to be the path that they're taking for a lot of this now, um, which lets them get vaccines out there faster and potentially be more effective. So, I'm hoping that continues to be a thing that they just kind of do in general now. Um, seems like a much better delivery vector for doing that kind of stuff. Hmm. It's actually looking pretty good. I don't know if that's showing up super well on the camera, but I feel like the... Uh, The wood grain is looking a little bit better than that. People are very confused when they find out that find out the lead scientist working on Moderna was a very open furry, even using their persona PFP Twitter profile for official announcements. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know, um, it's one of those things where, uh, especially, uh, I guess there's a lot of furries in um, IT as well. Which, hey, you know what? More power to him. Um, that's awesome. Thought it was great. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm glad that uh, furry is being more accepted now. Um, I am not a furry myself, but I follow a bunch of people that are. And uh, 
it was always one of those things where I felt really bad because they kind of just like got the brunt of everything. Um, but they they seem to be more accepted now, which is great. They should be. It's just something that makes them happy. You know what? That paint job is looking pretty dang good. I think it's looking awesome. Kind of insane how much hate they get. Like, they just want to dress up as animals. They aren't interbreeding. Yeah, it's it's like they're doing something that's fun for them. They are uh, making, honestly, fantastic costumes when they, when they have the uh, furry conventions and stuff like that. Like, as someone that does cosplay uh, a little bit, I wish I could do the quality work that um, furries do with their persona costumes. Like, that is dang good stuff. Um, my stuff really pales in comparison. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, it's just a, it's something that they get to enjoy doing. Um, like, let them do what they want. It's not hurting anyone. Alright. Trying to think if I should do more. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do for, for this now? Before I do the very edge highlighting on this, I'm going to go through and dry brush on some dark green for moss, and we're going to call that a good spot for that. Um, those fursuits cost around 502k to make, too. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, they put a lot of work into those things, and they look fantastic. Like, I make relatively cheap uh, foam costumes for things. Um... Like, I did a... Well, I made I made a foam various suit that was, like, my first attempt at doing a, a an EVA foam type thing. It, it looks not great, but it was my first time trying. Um, but since then, I've made... Um, well, actually, this is what the, the bar is for at the bottom. I made a... Um, Crazy Taxi cosplay uh, that I used uh, EVA foam to make the taxi uh, that basically fit around my waist um, as sort of like a belt, and it worked great. Uh, it came out pretty fantastic, and I uh, also used um, craft foam, thin craft foam, to make a wig, essentially, for um, the hair. And it looks great. Uh, that being said, the furry stuff is way more expensive and much better looking than anything that I have done. <laughs> I, I wish I had the amount of talent that those people have for doing their uh, persona costumes. I think I need to give the green another shake, because it's not quite mixing on the lid. There we go. Uh, now that's coming out a little bit better. Alright, got most of that off. Let's do few hits on this to try to get kind of like a moss kind of speckling on certain areas. Lord 
so I'm going to randomly install Arch Linux in a VM to see how it's going. It even has an installer now. Oh, that's cool. I honestly have not used Arch Linux before. Um, I've heard the uh, package system for it's pretty good, though. good, but they push packages the fastest of any other distro on rolling release, so you have to watch an update advisory of warnings for breakage and update at least every two weeks to avoid breaking. Definitely not for a workstation. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I think it would be something fun to try out for, like, like you said, a VM where I don't care if it breaks if it's inside a VM kind of thing. As much as I enjoy tinkering, I also want to have a computer that runs. <laughs> so, yeah, I may have to try it out in a VM sometime, though. Thankfully, VM stuff is way easier to do now and way more prevalent as far as um, having systems that can run it. That used to be the thing that you had to really kind of work for was finding the right uh, hardware to run it as well. So you need to have specific extensions on the processor, and that's just more of a thing now that just exists in general on processors instead of having to buy a very specific processor that has the right extensions for it. Manjaro is the perfect mix. Just wish that controversy wasn't there. The two-week hold on packages sometimes breaks it itself because Arch Package Manager doesn't expect hold packages. That's fun. Yeah, the, uh, I did not know about the controversy about Manjaro until you had told me about it previously. That's, uh, yeah, it's still a little iffy to have, uh, donation money to be spent on, on a gaming system and not really answer to, uh, if that was needed kind of thing. I'd use Arch and deal with the breakage, but NVIDIA doesn't play well with rolling releases. Use a Linux kernel newer than the latest NVIDIA release. The display server doesn't work, so you pretty much have periods of three days with no UI. That's fun. Um, yeah, like, um, like, at least back when I was using, um, the NVIDIA drivers, like the NVIDIA binary blob drivers that you could get from NVIDIA's website. Um, I remember it just being a horror story because every time you go to update your kernel drivers, the NVIDIA kernel modules would not necessarily update as well. 
So then it would just be like, oh, nope. Going to text terminal. Cool. Um, guess I'm going to have to fix that. Um, I guess now um, it seems like they're actually going to start pulling their weight and pushing stuff into uh, Linus's kernel tree. So hopefully that uh, will make things work easier. Because that's the other problem is if you don't have the NVIDIA binary blobs, uh, it is hell to uh, use uh, Nuvo most times because, especially with newer, newer video cards, Nuvo breaks very often. Um, that's why I usually use Ubuntu since they offer a few different drivers. They have one tested for each release that you can use, usually the latest Windows version. Yeah. Yeah, I, that was the main selling point for Ubuntu for me for a while was the NVIDIA drivers. Because um, they just didn't care about uh, keeping their repos um, free. Uh, for uh, their stuff versus uh, Fedora is, is less intense about the free repos at this point like um, they have the optional repos that you can um, enable for the non-free packages um, so it's at least nice that they went that path now because before it was like no if you want to get non-free packages, you gotta go find your own repos and stuff like that, so, you know, you end up using, like, RPM Forge and stuff like that. That's why I was nice with Ubuntu, where it's just like, no, especially when you're installing the system, you want to be able to have your drivers just work, so that's why it's nice having the, uh, the option to use the NVIDIA drivers, uh, rather than using Nuvo and hoping for the best. As someone that has uh, previously had to test um, audio stuff on Linux for my job, um, having to run audio testing with the Nuvo drivers uh, does not work well, especially if it's a newer video card. Um, and that kind of stuff, so. Uh, I prefer Debian definitely over Ubuntu. I'm not keen on snap packages in Ubuntu, but they don't bother me too much. Just wish Debian would use latest KDE, Plasma, LTS releases. But the policy doesn't line up with the release dates for it. Yeah, that's... The rolling release schedule is the thing that's always going to bite people. Um, like, that, that's a problem in general. Um... Like, <laughs> uh, because what? So Ubuntu's on a six-month uh, release schedule, if I remember correctly. Uh, Fedora is the same at this point, where they they do a six-month release schedule. Um, so it works well for certain things, but when you're trying to get hardware, when you try to get hardware, um hardware vendors lined up to also be on um we try to get hardware vendors to also be on the same release schedule as your OS that is nearly impossible almost never works that way so you end up getting hardware vendors wanting to get support in and then them not having their stuff ready uh in time for when your release schedule is supposed to be. And then um, it just ends up spiraling from there. Because they're like, no, we got to get this in there. And then you're like, okay, well, your stuff's not ready in time, so I don't know what to tell you. 
Uh, Debian is on a two plus year release schedule. Yeah. Um, for their stable, at least. Um, they do have their unstable version that you can always throw on. That's like drinking from the fire hose, but it's unstable for a reason. <laughs> You know what? I think we're gonna do the eyes next on this. We'll do the eyes, we'll do a quick hit of the mouth with black. Um, and honestly, like, I don't think I'm gonna mix paint for this. I'm just gonna use a fine brush. Wet the tip of the brush a little bit. And just use the lid, because a ton of paint for just doing eyes. Mm. Gotta get the tip to... There we go. That should work. But yeah, like like I said, having having previously worked on testing audio hardware for Linux, um, trying to get hardware vendors to line up on their release schedule to an OS release schedule is fraught. <laughs> uh, it does not typically work out too well. And then you end up just arguing back and forth between each other because it's like, no, we got to get this in for our customers. And it's like, well, it hasn't gone through proper testing because you're late on getting your drivers delivered to us. So it's really hard to test it when you're kind of throwing this at us last minute and telling us we got to get it in for our release when our release schedule is such that we're going to be releasing in a month, and you expect us to get all of our testing done and approved in that span of time, when at the same time we're also supposed to be going through release engineering to make sure that everything gets packaged correctly, because we need extra time for that. It's just terrible. And I'm glad I don't do that testing anymore. Because it was stressing me out. That and being on the hook for... Uh, um being on the hook for testing uh, uh, trying to remember CVs so whenever uh, we had a issue that came in from the field as far as like a massive security advisory kind of situation um being on the hook to test that is not great because it's got very quick turnaround time. Uh, less so on the closed source side, from what I, from my understanding. So, like Microsoft tends to get informed uh, fairly far in advance about any security advisory stuff because they're closed source so they have far more time to get a solution built and uh, work on testing it but when you're working for a Linux company and your stuff is going to be out in the open um, they tend to let you know about it very last minutes 
um, at least from a development and testing standpoint. So it, it makes for very difficult testing schedule. I say this is someone that had to spend a weekend testing um, for uh, what was the name of that security situation? Um, Blueborn. The Blueborn exploit. Uh, I had to do about God, I can't even remember how much testing I had to do for that. I spent the most of a weekend testing it. Um, because it was getting released uh, the Monday um, after that weekend. That was a fun time. All right, that looks pretty good. We got to let the uh, paint dry. Then I can do, like, a couple little shine spots on this. And that will look pretty good. I feel like we're looping on this a lot. Mm. Speaking of vulnerabilities, I'm glad that Log4J got publicly... Er, hopefully IT did. Don't like the hate for the devs, but glad that people took it serious. Yeah, like, I'm very much of the opinion that that stuff should go public as soon as possible. Uh, and, um, like, give devs plenty of time to get the fixes done. Um... But, like, reasonable disclosure times and having that stuff be public is, is a much better way of doing things. Um, because otherwise, it's just, like, ugh, I, I... I don't like when stuff is um, just done behind closed doors and you don't inform anyone kind of thing. Um... Yeah, the log for j thing, like, that was... remember that being in the news for a bit. That was something that I didn't need to test, thankfully. Um, but... I was pretty happy with how it was handled. Um, they did a good job with it. Alright. I feel like... Yeah, that could dry a little bit more. I'll let that sit a little bit longer before I do this. But yeah, the log for J thing could have been way worse than it was. Uh, thankfully, got fixed pretty quick. And, um... You know, they, they did the disclosure properly for it kind of thing. It's always one of those things you worry about, though, like, um, when experts find a vulnerability. You're like, okay, well, they found it. Was this found by malicious people way before the experts found the vulnerability kind of thing? Okay. Let's hit this up real quick. Gonna see if I can do very small dots doing a little bit of shine on the eyes. It's very hard, but on just enough overdoing it. Also doesn't help that my hands are shaky as hell. I'm 
trying to keep this on camera. Um, there we go. What do you think would be better to host a private modded MC server on? I have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, 4 gigabytes RAM, and I have a laptop that doesn't get much use. One pack would probably need a 68 gig RAM, but do you think the Pi could? Um, if you're if you're talking Minecraft Classic, um. Obvious answer is a laptop, but not happy at the idea of leaving a laptop on for its because of where. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, so Minecraft Classic is just it's a it's a beast. Like <laughs> whatever you throw it on, it's going to use all the amount, or it's going to use all the RAM that it possibly can. Um, by the basis of it being Java based. Um, you can throw it on the pie, um, and it will work, uh, but depending on how many people you have, yeah, um, depending on how many people you have on the server and stuff like that, four gigs, it's probably going to bog down. Like it's it's theoretically possible to run it on on a Pi. Will it run well? Mm. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> I think it would probably run better than Ternos if you I have not heard of that. They're a free server host that is fully ad supported, so I'm not sure if the Pi is stronger. Runs decent on the server host, but not the best. Yeah, like again, with with um Minecraft Classic, like it's It, it's a beast. Like it's it's as good as it can be uh, running on Java. Um, it's just it's 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 the best it can be given the circumstances. Um, but I personally, I would say that it's gonna run real rough on the. On the uh, I, <laughs> uh, but that's just the that's just because Java. <laughs> and actually. Reminds me, so do they even do official updates for My or Minecraft Classic at this point? Because um, I think they're just doing, what, Bedrock Edition is the official one that's no longer Java-based, if I remember correctly. Granted, I mean, it's Java, so, like, the sources out there, you can just, you can do probably community patches at this point. 
They do parody of Java and Bedrock. Slight difference, but they update on same. Oh, really? I didn't know that they were still uh, supporting the uh, original one. So that's cool. They keep Java for classic combat and servers, but they keep Bedrock for children and microtransactions. That makes sense. Um, and the Bedrock one is the one that they port to the consoles at this point, too, right? Um, it's like, I think the Switch version is that, and basically every console version is the Bedrock version. Um, and that one's got the cross-servers, uh, cross-play servers, as far as I know. Yeah, they do it on a pattern. For example, they did a Caves and Cliffs update. They gave Java and Caves... Uh, Java the Caves part early, Bedrock the Cliffs part early. Then when it was stable on both, they combined. Oh, that's cool. Well, I'm glad that they're, they're still supporting the uh, Java version, because... As soon as Microsoft got it, I was like, oh no. <laughs> How is this going to go? <laughs> um... But that's cool. I'm, I'm glad that they're still supporting it. Uh, they also recently made it where when you buy either version, you get both. Oh, that's really cool. I, I'm, you know, I'm... I am surprised at uh, the fact that they um, are fully supporting both but I am pleasantly surprised by that. That That's really nice. I'm glad that they're doing that. I guess I'm just uh, jaded. I expected that uh, when Microsoft got involved that uh, they were just going to completely uh, get rid of the Java version. Uh, they did port our Mojang accounts to merge with Microsoft accounts, but they rewarded it with an exclusive porter key. Looks cool, so only OGs who owned the Java before they did it have the key like me. That's awesome! Yeah, like I said, I'm... I'm genuinely impressed that uh, they did not uh, did not completely destroy the original version. But that's just me being um, pessimistic <laughs> from previous Microsoft. Uh, they did mess it up, though. You can't cuss in Minecraft 119 and beyond regard, uh, regardless if you are in a public server or your own self-hosted family server. Get banned for all MC multiplayer for a week, even for words. Wow! Did get 7-day ban for heck and... Wow, okay, well... Well, there's that. Um... I don't know. It's... Again, like... I It was one of those things where I was like, I am I was worried when Microsoft bought it, what was going to happen. Um, for the most part, it seems like they did a decent job of not completely screwing it up, but... Needless to say, community outrage is present. Yeah, well, that will always be present. <laughs> um, that's not me excusing Microsoft. That's just knowing how that kind of stuff functions in general. <laughs>
I'm still curious to see how uh, things are going to go with the uh, Activision Blizzard deal, assuming that even happens. Um, I do not see that company getting any better. But who knows. Embrace, extend, extinguish. Yep. Very familiar with, with that. Um, it's been the mantra for a very long time now. And uh, something that I will always worry about with Microsoft regardless of their better will towards the open source community at this point. Although I will say this much for Microsoft, at least Balmer is not in charge anymore. I know it wasn't entirely on Balmer, but Balmer was a huge problem for Microsoft. And it has been a joy to see him no longer with the company. of the eyebrows a tad on this. There we go. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Honestly, given where we started, I think... It's looking pretty good. So now, got basically all the work out of the way for Groot himself. So now we just need to work on the base. And then, that's basically it. I will do the clear coat later. Because the clear coat is not interesting to watch. Because <laughs> it's basically me just going at it with a spray can. Alright, so probably do a flat brown for the base just to give it a uh, dirt kind of color to go with for a start, and then uh, paint the rocks after that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just do a little bit of water in here, and that can probably get to reliquify the uh, brown that I used a while back. Hmm. It's kind of a light dirt, though. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? That's fine. Alright, 
So this is dry brush. Dry brush can go off to that side. I need a big chunky brush. So that I don't spend a ton of time painting dirt. <laughs> Oh, Fantasy Costco. Oh, the Adventures. Adventure Zone soundtrack. Great. Yeah, you know what? I think I need to use flat brown. Need to do a new thing of flat brown, because this is a bit too loose. So how's your Arch VM going? Get it running? better than the very washed out waterlogged brown that I was going to try to do. Is wrong. The Pi only ha has only one gig of ooh ooh one gig of RAM. That's uh, I don't think that's gonna work for running uh, Minecraft. Sorry to say. Give it a shot, but that's going to be a real rough run, I think. <laughs> I mean, there's tons of other servers you could use that 3B, 3B plus for. Um, you can make it into a uh, Quake 3 server. Quake 3 would run great on that hardware. That's a personal favorite of mine. I was real big into Quake 3 back in the day, so I'm a little, uh, a little biased when it comes to that. Which 
Just not sure what to do with the mail servers a waste because those get blocked nearly instantly by major providers, yeah. Like I said, you know, it's, uh... It doesn't have to not be a game server. You can make it into a game server. It's just... You're going to be very limited by the uh, thing. Never played Quake 3, but I do have Quake 3 RTX on Steam, but never played... Wait, so... Did they do an RTX version for Quake 3? If so, I need to get that downloaded immediately. <laughs> uh, I have the RTX version for Quake 2. Um... I didn't know they made a, a an RTX version for Quake 3. If so, I need... Okay. Well, uh, maybe doing that tomorrow for stream. <laughs> um, yeah, I played Quake 3 like crazy. Oh, okay, it was Quake 2. Okay. Yeah, I have the Quake 2 version, which Quake, 3, Quake 2 is a great game. No problems with Quake 2. It, it's very fun. Uh, Quake 3 um, holds a special spot in my heart. Um, when I first uh, did a LAN party uh, during college, uh, we were playing uh, Quake 3. Uh, it was a bunch of folks. Um... That was actually where I came up with my Sonic Death Monkey moniker. For, well, I mean, I got Sonic Death Monkey from um, High Fidelity, but that is where I first started using the uh, handle. Uh, was playing at the LAN party for Quake 3, and uh, I did okay. Like, a lot of these, a lot of the people that I was playing against had been playing Quake 3 since it came out as a demo. <laughs> um... So I was not a good match for them, uh, but it was still very, very fun. And a lot of the people that I played at that LAN party with, um, I, I knew, like, one person at the LAN party uh, who invited me to it, because um, I worked with him at my... He was, he was uh, a hardware developer at the uh, company that I was interning at during college, and he invited me to the LAN party. Um... And then I ended up meeting a bunch of people at the LAN party that I ended up working with uh, at my job post-college. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, a, a good chunk of the people I work, that I uh, that I ended up working with at the next job uh, were big into Quake 3 to the point where we were playing it during um, lunchtime every day during the work week. Um, so every every lunch, uh, we would eat our food as quickly as possible and then hop on the Quake 3 server uh, for about an hour. <laughs> uh, so I was doing that for about... Well, I was at that job for about three years. Uh, so I got very, very good at Quake 3 during that time uh, to the point where I was... Um, like, probably rank three on the server at work, so I got very good at it. Uh, I'm probably, my skills are probably way out of date at this point, but, uh, oh god, I need to go back and play some Quake 3. I'm so good. The movement was fantastic in Quake 3, like, the game feel for Quake 3 is, is phenomenal. Granted, the physics are really, really broken in Quake 3. Um, very, very broken. Um, but you, it's one of the things where you learn how broken the physics are, and you work that into the strategy of playing it. Is Quake kind of like classic Doom? Kinda. So Doom is, um, Doom is a sprite-based, uh, first-person shooter, so your environments are 3D, um, but all of the uh, enemies are flat textures, and uh, as you go around them, it basically swaps out the sprite for, like, a sideways sprite or a behind-the-scenes 
uh, body sprite. So it's a flat sprite that you're shooting at for em enemies. Um, so that's what Classic Doom is like. Uh, the other thing with Classic Doom is, um, like, you could enable mouse aim on it, but it didn't matter. Because, basically, you only had, you could only shoot on a flat plane. So if you had an enemy that was elevated, you just shot straight ahead and it would hit them. Um, you didn't have to aim up at them. Uh, when Quake came out, Quake had 3D, um... 3D models for their enemies, so it's fully 3D, as opposed to the levels just being 3D, and elevation and all that stuff actually mattered because you actually had to like aim at the enemies as opposed to just shooting a straight line kind of thing. Original Quake's pretty fun. Um, Quake 2 is even better. Uh, Quake 3 is a fantastic multiplayer game. But that is about all it's good for, because it has no, like, single-player campaign slash story kind of thing. It is literally just a multiplayer game. You can play it single-player, but you're, you're just going through death matches. Uh, so if you're looking for a story-based game, Quake, Quake 2 is the way to go. Um, but Quake 3 was fantastic for multiplayer. Like, so good. Um, they also did a Quake 4, which was a more recent game, um, that came out, god, 2000-something or other. Um... I think it came out before 2010, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember. I, I don't remember exactly when Quake 4 came out. Quake 4 was fun. It had a decent uh, campaign, uh, but the multiplayer was not great, and the physics were not great. And it got very little um, attention from tournaments because the game feel wasn't good for the uh, competitive multiplayer part of it. But that's also a, hey, this doesn't feel right because the physics aren't horrendously broken like they were in Quake 3 kind of thing. Like... <sighs> Actually, I'm trying to think a good example of this. Um, if you're at all familiar with the fighting game scene. Um, so, the fighting game community is very much... Um, there's a lot of strategies that the fighting game community uses. Um, that's... A lot of the strategies that they use are things that exist in fighting games only because um, they were bugs that existed in um, Street Fighter 2. So, like, cancels and stuff like that, which were, you know, stuff that were not intended features of... Street Fighter 2 that ended up being staples of fighting games because they were bugs. Uh, much the same way it went for Quake 3, where um, yes, the the physics were janky, but people enjoyed the, the jank. So um, after Quake 3, uh, there were a bunch of other first-person shooters that came out that, even if they weren't using the uh, id tech engine for that Quake 3 used, um, they made their own engine that emulated the jank of Quake 3 so that the... 
um, game feel was right. Uh, and when I say game feel, I mean things like um, doing um, strafe running combined with bunny hops to accelerate. Uh, stuff like that, where it was not the intended uh not the intended way that the game would work, but uh, they were strategies that um, people figured out by messing with the game and finding all these bugs in it that um, they learned to use to create the strategies for playing the game. And so there's games like uh, Warsaw, which is a uh, first-person shooter, uh, very much styled uh, similar to Quake 3, that it uses a lot of the same strategies that Quake 3 uses, uh, and it has tutorials teaching you how to do those strategies built into it. Um, and then for a while, um, they tried to bring back Quake 3 uh, as a browser-based game uh, called Quake Live. And it was, it was Quake 3. It was just played through the browser. Um, I think it still exists, but it's actually a... a download now um, and it's basically trying to be a continuation of, of Quake 3 um, but I brought that up because at the beginning when you when you kicked off uh, your account on Quake Live it would run you through a tutorial uh, to learn the controls of the game and all that um, which Quake 3 really didn't have because this was, you know, mid to, mid to uh, early to mid 90s where they didn't really have tutorials. Um, so Quake Live had a tutorial to teach you how to control the game. And as part of the tutorial, it would actually run you through... Um, tutorials on how to do the strategies you would need to know for tournament play, like doing the strafe run bunny hop stuff to keep accelerating, stuff like that. So, they very much knew that they needed to maintain the jank of Quake 3 uh, if they were going to bring it back. Um, and just surprisingly enough, when they made Quake 4, they did not bring any of that jank into it. And it ended up not getting the uh, same tournament play because of it. But that's just me rambling about Quake 3 for way too long. <laughs> I hope I didn't bore you. Quake 3 is one of those one of those things where if you get me started on it, I will go for a while. listening while setting up Ubuntu server on my laptop. Cool. Yeah, like I said, uh, Quake 3 is just one of those games where I will talk your ear off about it because it was just so formative in my in my time uh, getting into kind of that space because 
before Quake 3, I was mostly just a console gamer. I played some first-person shooters, but, you know, it was stuff like Goldeneye and stuff like that, console stuff where it's, it's fun, but I would not say it's a really hardcore scene like some of that stuff is. Um... And then getting into Quake 3 is just like, oh man, like, <laughs> uh, I am really starting to see why people are into this kind of thing. Another game I had a ton of fun with um, that also kind of had, like, janky physics but made for a very fun game was um, Unreal Tournament 2004. I played a ton of that game um, for a long while. Uh, we kind of had, like, a... Falling out of certain people at the job that uh, meant we didn't play Quake 3 for a while. Um, so I had started up a an Unreal Tournament 2004 server uh, that we played during lunch. And that game is fun as heck in a different way. Um... And the onslaught mode that they made for that game is fantastic if you have enough players for it. Like the the deathmatch stuff was was pretty fun. But who boy onslaught mode in UT two thousand four was fantastic. Again, if you had the players for it, because they're very, very big maps that only really work well if uh, you have a lot of players, because otherwise it takes a very long time to get from point A to point B. But Onslaught mode is basically a very big map. You have to capture these nodes and you make connections from node to node. And once you get a connection that feeds all the way from your team's power core in your base to the other team's power core in their base, then you could start damaging their power core. And that was the whole point of the, of the game. The only way you can win in that is... You need to get a connection all the way from your team's power core to the enemy's power core. And once you do that, then you start damaging the enemy's power core, and that's how you win the game, is just by destroying their power core. Um, very fun style of play. Um, and the maps were huge, so you'd have all these different vehicles that you could use to get around. Um... And you could do some real fun stuff with those vehicles. Um, and the weapons for Unreal were just also very well done. Um, one of my favorite strategies that also I'm pretty sure would get me banned on a regular server uh, if I was playing not at 
a job where I was playing with people that I knew was um, you had all these different vehicles, right, that you could fly around with in onslaught mode. Um, one of them was this thing called a Manta, I believe, where basically it was this little hovercraft that had these two big fans that it flew around on top of. Uh, Single-seater, um, you could fly around in it uh, if you, you could shoot with it, but then it had uh, the right-click alternate fire mode on it was it would uh, reverse the fans so it would push you down to the ground. So you could, like, fly by people and hit right-click to basically cut their heads off with the, the fans, which was very effective. And it was that was the intended style of play, so that's not what would get me in trouble. Um, but what I figured out was... Um, in Onslaught mode, you had this weapon uh, called a Spider Mine Launcher, where basically regular fire on the gun would shoot out these little mines that would look like spiders that would sit on the ground, and if an enemy came close to them, they would stand up and run at the enemy and blow up. Um, and then you could do an alternate fire on the Spider Mine Launcher that would basically do a guidance laser, so you could aim the laser at someone and all the mines that you'd already deployed would stand up and run at the laser point so it's a very fun weapon but what i figured out was that you could take the spider mine launcher and you could uh if you if you set it up just right you could fire the spider mines a couple spider mines onto each fan on the manta so you could get like i think two mines on each fan uh without them blowing up and then you could get into the Manta and fly elsewhere. And then, if there were any enemies that you were getting close to, uh, the spider mines would just stand up and jump off of the fan blades and start running at the enemy. So, I used that strategy to basically fly over to power nodes that I knew were being attacked by the enemy. I would fly over, the mines would jump off and start running at the people. So they'd have to contend with, oh no, there's mines coming at me, I need to shoot these things before they blow me up, on top of me shooting at the enemies and running them over with the fan blades. Uh, that strategy was apparently very frowned upon on public servers um, and would probably get me banned from servers. Uh, but I used it a heck of a lot when I was playing at work. <laughs> I just realized I'm running over time. I'm gonna do some quick highlighting on these rocks and then uh, probably call it a night. Very much I uh, lose track of the time when I am painting, which is both a blessing and a curse. Time zones always throw me off. We get that. You end at 5.30 for me. Yeah. I, uh... Run until 6.30 my time just because it, uh... Works out well for letting my dog out and uh, making sure that I am functional for work tomorrow. <laughs> I would stream more if I didn't have to worry about work. As with anything, work always gets in the way for anything that I'm trying to do that's fun. But that is life.
do need to remember to think about what I want to play tomorrow. Because I had streamed uh, Yakuza 0 last week, but I'm worried that uh, there's going to be some spicy content in it. Because I haven't played uh, the Yakuza games before, but I know them by... Uh, reputation. So I marked the stream as um, mature, but I'm I'm worried that I'm not going to get that many views because of that. So I think I'm gonna have to find something different to play instead of Yakuza. Uh, this is random, but I highly recommend. Sure for flashing OS, ISO, or any ISO to USB drives. I have not used that. Um, flashing it to, to USB drives, like, um, you talking like installer disks and stuff like that? Because uh, for me, like, if it's, if I'm putting a an ISO onto a um, USB drive, I'm generally just using DD. <laughs> Gravity Rush 2. Uh, yeah, I could do Gravity Rush 2. Um, yeah, if, if it's um, if it's just burning an ISO to a... Well, burning. Putting an ISO to uh, uh, a USB drive, I will generally just use DD. Uh, I always use Rufus or Balenetcher. I sometimes use DD. Yeah, I'm just... I'm so used to using DD at this point that I... It's the first thing I always go to, um, unless I happen to be on Windows, in which case, why am I trying to put an ISO onto a flash drive on Windows? <laughs> uh, you know what? That is a good amount of highlighting on this. Elena is nice because it has nice UI intuitive and it verifies the checksum after a rice. That's nice. I don't generally check the check to make sure that uh, the checksum went because I just generally <laughs> if the thing doesn't work it doesn't work kind of thing um, that's cool you know what that looks mostly good I think I think that's pretty good for uh, for the base I just need to go around and do blue trim to match the rest of the hero figures as far as the blue trim goes. Um, but I will do that off stream and then I will clear coat this off stream and then I can show it off for the next one. Do you have a Discord channel, by the way? I do not. Uh, I need to get that set up at some point in time. I basically have I have Discord for joining up on, on other people's stuff. Uh, but I don't have a Discord set up for my Streaming stuff. I should do that at some point in time. Um, probably not get around to it this week, but I will try doing that next time. And actually, thank you for the recommendation on doing uh, Gravity Rush 2. I think I will do that tomorrow. That would be a fun one to play. Volunteer to be a Discord mod if you need one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I will absolutely take you up on that if you're offering. So, um... Yeah, I'll have to get around to that. But, in the meantime, I am going to call it a night because my dog is already just bombarding me with licks because she needs to go out. So, I will be calling it a night. Uh, hope you had fun. I did as always. Uh, I will most likely be coming back on uh, next Monday to do some more painting because uh, I am really enjoying this. Uh, but tomorrow I will be coming back and doing, uh, you know what, probably some Gravity Rush too. So, uh, thanks for the stream. Wake up so late that I missed 70 virus. Yeah, it, 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 it's totally fine if you miss it. Um, you're more than welcome to watch the VODs after. Um, but I, I realize that I'm, I'm streaming at an odd time for people too, particularly people with, uh, regular working hours. So, um... But yeah, I'm, I'm glad you had fun, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. And uh, hope you have a good one. And uh, 
please stay safe. Um, I, I hope the COVID continues to, uh, uh, you continue to do better with the COVID um, and it just goes away soon. But yeah, uh, talk to you later. Have a good one.